Life is something that's very difficult to describe. And most people, when they say something is alive, they look at something happening. There's always something happening, isn't there? There's always function. And one of the best ways to just describe life is is it's a series of integrated functions. There's a certain number, a certain type of activities that we look for. When we don't see any functioning, when we don't see something happening, then we assume that something is not alive. Of course, the the structural organization of things produces these functions that are all integrated into what we would call life. We just said living things, it's a series of processes. What are some of those processes? Well, there's energy processes. Uh, You're not going to carry out activities. You're not going to live. You're not going to do things if you don't have some sort of energy. Every living thing has some fuel source Um, that it's going to use. We recognize that living things grow. We expect that when we see a living thing that there's some sort of growth and development, I guess, would be a part of that. We see children develop into teenagers and teenagers develop into adults. There's typically a responsiveness. Sometimes it's very slow, like maybe a plant growing toward the light. Or you getting mad at what somebody says. But living things respond to their environment. And of course, reproduction. When we talk about those levels of organization, when we get to the cellular level, molecularly, chemically, things are so complex that they cannot be reproduced other than by the living thing itself. Right? We tend to think that our labs and our science can do almost anything, but it can't. We do not have the technological capability of putting all of those chemicals together to make something live. There are no Frankensteins in our world. Life cannot be created. It is so. The only way that we get new living things is by the reproduction of living things that are already in existence. You're here because a cell from a mom and a cell from a dad came together to form a brand new cell, and that developed into who you are. And of course, what I always like to think of as the number one thing, it's organized. It has an organizational pattern. And of course, most of this is due to the information structures, those nucleic acids that provide the template, the information, the organization that builds these cells and these human bodies. I also want to look at some major characteristics, like this one about an aqueous environment. Aqueous is just a fancy word that means watery, right? Water is a very, very, very important part of life. We don't know of any life that exists without a watery medium to it. Uh, Before there were refrigerators, lots of preserving of food would take place by drying it out, right? Beef jerky doesn't rot and dried apricots don't rot. They can last months and months and months without rotting. Now, even stuff in your refrigerator will sometimes rot. But if you take the water out of things, if you dry them out, the microorganisms that would like to rot and decay those things can't survive because they need water. All life is dependent upon water. You don't have to write down every bit of beef jerky and all of that on here. Okay? Do you know how much of your body is water? How much of my body is water? Most? 90, 80, 70, 60, 50, 20? 
70? 70 is a pretty good number. Um, somewhere, I, I like to do use two-thirds, right? 66% is two-thirds. Take your body, cut it into three separate pieces, three equal pieces. Two of those pieces are just water. If you see the amount of dust that comes out of a cremation, it's not much. You fit a whole human body in a small box. Now, a lot of, the, a lot of what was in that human body has gone off in the form of gases, but the actual substance is, is not that great. So about, you know, two-thirds, 70%. Where is all that water? Why don't I slosh when I walk? If most of me is water, why am I not, you know, have you ever carried a cup of coffee or a, a drink in a cup, you know, and if you walk and just, you know, sometimes it slops, and why don't I slosh when I walk? Where is all that water? In the cells. Yeah, in the cells. If you want to kind of visualize it, visualize it like this. Right? Ever had a water balloon fight? Uh, here, right here, I got a bucket full of water. But all the water is in these little water balloons, right? If I carry this bucket around, will it slosh? No. In fact, you take one of these water balloons, they're pretty tough, pretty hard, aren't they? Right? This is, if you push your hand on here, this is tough stuff, right? Because the water isn't all spread all over the place. It's in little distinct packets. And that's why my human body feels tough here. Because all the water is down in these microscopic little compartments that we call cells. It's compartmentalized into the cells. I thought it was also interesting. I don't know if you look at, looked at the list. In your textbook, there's a list of all the elements in the human body. You know what, what the number one element in your human body is? There's more of it by weight than anything else. Again, almost two-thirds of your body is this. Oxygen. Now think. Most of my human body is oxygen. Isn't that an interesting thought? Most of my human body is a gas. Right? Why? Well, because if most of me is water, and the major, large, heavy component of water is oxygen, right, Right? Then my body, 63% of the weight of my body is oxygen. I just thought that, you know, I just stopped the other day. It was something I'd never really stopped and thought about. And I went, oh, that is, yeah, that's pretty interesting. 